Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel once again. Today, I'm going to be doing the opposite of a video that I did recently where we started with an AHL team. And every time we won three games, we got to add a superstar. So the inverse of that is going to be starting with an all-star team and every time we lose three games, we lose a player. I turned off the salary cap for obvious reasons and I'm going to turn off waivers just so that other teams do not get the ability to claim all these players as we send them down. Once again, I'm pretty much just making it up on the spot the amount of loss Losses. Three seems reasonable and it also seemed reasonable the other way Which is why I had that and it turned out pretty good. So hopefully it works just as good here Yeah, I'd say this team's chemistry is all right not too shabby defensively either I've also heard once upon a time that this Vasilevsky guy is pretty good and same with Igor Shesterkin That name looks a little bit familiar. Yes, this is our lineup How long will it take for them to lose three games? Let's find out We have three pretty strong games to start the year here between the Rangers the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Colorado Colorado Avalanche. So let's see how this goes. Will we be able to win all three? We get a shootout win against the Rangers, a 6-5 win against Tampa Bay, and a 5-1 win over Colorado. So a few close calls there for sure. I don't feel like we're going to lose three in a row. So I'm going to go ahead and make a comfortable sin there. We do get destroyed by Calgary, however, and Detroit takes us down as well. So we need one more loss and we will have to get rid of a player. And I'm probably going to start from the bottom up, meaning I'm going to get rid of the fourth line first. And we are not losing any games. There we go. We lost 4-3 to the Flyers, so let's do it. I don't know who to get rid of. Let's check out our defense. Maybe I'll get rid of someone like Shea Theodore. Yeah, let's get rid of Shea Theodore. We will be calling up Irwin. Why did I say it like that? I don't know why I can't pronounce names properly. I'm just going to call him Matt to avoid that happening again. Still gets a plus one. Not too bad. I would like to think that we are definitely making the playoffs. I'm pretty sure we're 0-2 against Detroit, and we just lost against Pittsburgh. So we're losing games faster than I thought we would. Maybe we'll win a few here. Really? Okay, and that counts as another one. So we are one loss closer even after I send this next player down. I think Johnny's got to be the next one to go. Our fourth line is Hiberto, Ovechkin, and Leeson. I suppose I shouldn't assume anymore. We got to lose two games before sending another player down. We have San Jose here. That'll be a big win and a convincing 7-1 victory over the Seattle Kraken. So we still need two more games before sending a player to the Shadow Realm or the AHL, if you will. Shootout loss to the Carolina Hurricanes and a shootout loss to the Florida Panthers. So another player will be getting deleted. I guess I'll send down Huberdo. See you later, Huberdo. You will be missed. Uh-oh, we have a dash one on the fourth line now. That is not a good sign. With a record of 14, six and three, we aren't exactly where I thought we would be at this point in the season, but hopefully we can get some more wins strung together here. A big win over Chicago and a nice win there against Columbus as well. Thank you. That's three W's in a row. Another win against Pittsburgh. We seem to love overtime. Hello? 9-2. Winnipeg is going to be a 6-3 win and a 4-2 loss to the LA Kings. So we only need one more game before... It happens again. Will the New York Islanders be the team? Yes, they will. They shut us out. Now that's impressive. I kind of want to send down our backup goalie, but I feel like we could wait later in the season to do that. Yeah, I'm going to wait. Charlie McAvoy is the next player to go. Dylan McKilwraith will be coming up. I, for some reason, knew that he had really low discipline from an older NHL, maybe. At least they get a zero. That's not bad. We are five points up in our division, so we're doing all right, but we did not get the lead that I was hoping for early on. That's going to help, though. That will not. Come on, we gotta beat Detroit for the first time this year, I feel like. And we managed to pull it off in a 5-3 fashion. We beat New Jersey, shutting them out 5-0, and the Montreal Canadiens a 2-1 W. St. Louis and Min no, Minnesota beat us. Alright, so we have one more game, and then we lose another player. How will it go against Boston? It's gonna be a 4-2 win. That's huge. We're doing very well right now on a bit of a win streak here, and we keep it going against Boston 7-6. We're definitely not blowing other teams out of the water, though. It's pretty close games for the most part. And again, feels like a lot of overtimes. Okay, here we go. Now we're talking. A lot of Ws, and our roster is still very solid. So this looks promising. Dallas will shut us out 3-0, but we had a good run. I don't really know what to do here. I guess I'll start on the third line. We'll get rid of Marchand for now. Well, maybe we'll keep Marchand. I like him being a little pest. So we'll get rid of Barkov. Ooh, we can call up Hendricks Lapierre. That's not a bad player to call up. Our fourth line is officially Hershey Bears. Two games before the break. Can we get two Ws is the question, and we cannot. We go one for one. The Oilers get the better of us. So 
now that is one less game. We are kind of up pretty far, I gotta say, in our division. Surprisingly, the Metro looks rather weak in this simulation. I think whether or not we're making the playoffs is out of the question. That's a guaranteed yes. But will we lose enough players that by the time playoffs come around, we are done for? Maybe. And with back-to-back -back losses... That will be another one. I think I'm gonna send Marchie down. This is what our offense looks like with that exchange and the trade deadlines approaching. So will we be able to get there before losing three more is the real question that I want answered. So let's get an answer. No, I feel like that's not happening. There's a lot more games in between than I thought there was, but we will start it anyway. Actually, whoa, I shouldn't even do that because we could definitely lose three much faster. Time to go on a Western Canadian trip here and we lose one game out of that to Calgary. Okay, maybe we will make it to the trade deadline after all. The Islanders are our next opponent. They will dish us out a 4-2 L and we beat Columbus in overtime. Carolina our last opponent before the trade deadline. We do have one at the trade deadline, but I'll keep our trading block and just jump in to see who's available. Obviously not making any trades, but just for the sake of finding out why. No, how about don't do that? Spurgeon, Klingberg, Pavelski, Brodine. Okay, so there is a pretty solid set of players here this year, but again, we are not interested, so get me out of here. Spurgeon went to Pittsburgh in exchange for a first, a second, and Lindbergh. We're in Texas taking on the Stars, and they dummy us 7-4. That will do it. What to do, what to do. We have normal ice time allocation, normal defense allocation. I kind of like having a solid top four. I think I'd rather have a really good top six forwards and a top four defense and get rid of this third line, so I guess... We'll get rid of Ovi. It's a sad day seeing him sent down to Hershey. Oh no. I don't like that one bit. I'm going to make that move just so that we don't have a dash three. We are definitely a fair chunk through the season here. And I feel like our lead on the division has dwindled a little bit. We lost our first game there against the St. Louis Blues, but we came back with three strong W's. Nashville will also be a win. If we get swept in the first round of the playoffs, I'm actually going to find it hilarious. I won't even be upset. Pittsburgh Penguins... Our next opponent, 3-2 win. We only need one more loss before we suffer a, another devastating loss to the team. The Philadelphia Flyers, 40 wins on the year, and they will not make it 41 against us. Toronto has a record of 40-29-4, and, and then we have Montreal, who's not doing so hot. Can Toronto dish us an L? Yes, they can. All right, Nate Max got to go, and then I don't know what I'll do. If we lose three more games before the season's over, I guess I'll get rid of our backup. You know what? I'm going to get rid of our backup now. I'll get rid of Igor in case we don't lose three more. Zach Fucali. I remember when this guy was like a top prospect. There you have it. We got Vazzy and Zach as our two goalies. With eight games left, I would say it's possible that we lose three more and we lose the very first one there against the Montreal Canadiens. No way. Is this really happening again? Really? Sorry, Nate Mac. It's got to be done. At least we have a zero here now. I think we had a dash one before, didn't we? It absolutely does not make up for the overall we just lost, but I got something to make myself feel better. Five games left. Will we lose three of them? I honestly think there's a pretty good chance we do. There's one against Toronto. We'd have to lose the last two games of the regular season. And let's see if we do that. We will not. Was 54 wins enough to get us the President's Trophy? We got 76 points from Panera, and I expected much more, I'm going to be honest. We had 112 points. We finished first in the Metropolitan Division by quite a bit there. And in the entire league, we did get it. Vancouver finished second with 103. We had a lot more points than the second place team. I'm pretty shocked by that. Holy crap, the Pacific Division was nuts. Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver all right there at two, three, and four. St. Louis managed to sneak in with just under 90 points. McDavid was a plus 24. We got a plus 33 down here for Kale, but of course. We got, how does McHale, how does McHale? Why can I not talk? I actually do not understand. Mikhail Kamar. Yeah, I'm pretty baffled that we didn't have a point a game player. 76 was the most from Panarin, and then Crosby got 75. Matthews finished with a nice amount of points. And instead of getting the 92 goals he normally gets on the Toronto Maple Leafs, he gets 36 for us, which is elite. McDavid ends up with 67 points. Someone riddle me that. At least we didn't have anyone with zero points this time. Vazzy finished with only a 902, 275. So even he really didn't do that well. Fukali got absolutely destroyed. Well, not absolutely destroyed, but he didn't do too well in the one game he was in. It's not that bad, really. You know, if, if it was Timothy Jimothy, I'd be 
pretty happy. I guess for anyone that doesn't know, that's my be a pro goalie. So yeah, <laughs> that's not the, the worst stats in the world. I've seen much worse. Let's put it that way. Although he didn't have the best save percentage, he did get the most wins with 42. Thatcher Demko had a 927 save percentage and 41 wins. We got a 922 from Jonathan Quick down there. Holy smokes. Victor Hedman on the Tampa Bay Lightning was point a game, 82. Why couldn't you do that for us, Victor, huh? Morgan Riley put up 70. Yossi with 69. Hughes 66. The only player to break 100 is Patty Kane. He gets 101 and 48 goals. I see or 40. Yeah, okay. Never mind. I don't know why I'm tripping out so much. What is happening? It really shouldn't be this hard, you know? It also only seems to happen when I'm recording videos. I don't know if it's because I'm talking faster or anything like that, but... He was a dash four while doing this. 96 from Crosby and Barkov. You know what's funny? We had all of these players right here, I'm pretty sure. From Crosby down to Cooch. And none of the ones on the front page are our players. It's all their regular team. I'm kind of wondering if it could do with ice time allocation. Because maybe the fact that we had a bunch of other superstars kind of took away from the ice time allocation. It was split out more evenly. I don't know. That could be it. That's just a working theory. Miles Wood had a 23.7 shooting percentage. I don't know why I decided to sort by that but i just did 153 pims for kyle clifford what a mad lad 153 pims and a 15.4 shooting percentage can't complain here's one final look before we jump into the Stanley Cup playoffs, our offense still has two plus five lines. So our top six is absolutely insane. Bottom six is pretty meh. Defensively, our top four is nuts. And then we have McIlwraith and Matt Irwin, which is not terrible. It is a zero. The overalls aren't exactly ideal, but I'm sure we'll make it work. And in net, we have Vasilevsky backed up by Zach Fucali, who hopefully will not show his face in net the entire time. First round is against the Florida Panthers, and we are off to a blazing hot hot start here we are up three nothing and let's see if we can make it four no it is not a sweep will florida push another game they will not a convincing 4-1 w for your saginaw superstars round two is the carolina hurricanes the bunch of jerks haven't heard them called that in a long time and that is crazy i believe in the dream reverse sweep that's a good start second period nice all right scarposa where's the other players you know we only have what is it 10 superstars on our team well i guess 11 if you consider the goalie crosby power play goal puts us up 3-0 and now it looks like we're at least not gonna get swept Are you joking? That was the fastest two goals of all time. Thank you, Matthew. Scored on his old teammate, Freddy. And that will push a game five. Yeah, one could argue Vasilevsky played all right in that game. Can we live to fight another day? First period is going to be a great start. Panarin really carrying us, it feels like, in the playoffs so far. A hectic second period. But we still have a two-goal lead heading into three. We did, however, see them score the fastest two goals in the history of the world in the last third period. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. Let's go, Sydney the Kidney. They managed to get one, but we still have a two-goal lead with five minutes to go. Just hold them off. That's all we got to do. And and we manage to do it successfully, pushing a game six. Reverse sweep. I told you, it's happening. Gotta have a little faith in the boys. You already know a game seven's gonna happen, so I don't even know what we're doing here. Yep, there you go. Easy. This game is so simple, and we're simply too good. Now we're just bullying them. It is 5-1 with 10 minutes left in the third period. Definitely gonna be a game seven. And I believe that the boys are gonna take home a dub and move on to the conference finals. 970 save percentage for Vazzy in that one. This guy has been standing on his head recently. If we lose in game seven after all this, I'm gonna be so upset. Here we go. Game seven time, first period. Ooh, all right. Shots are even, score is even. Second period, nice. Panarin scores and that gives us a one goal lead heading into the third and now we get a two goal lead because Kale McCarr, or should I say, Male Kamar, or whatever I called him, I don't, even, I don't even remember what I called him anymore. Oh no, Patches Barry's one, cuts the lead in half, seven minutes to go. Come on superstars, just hold them off. We got Vazzy in net, he should be able to do it all himself, but at least give him a little bit of support. I love that for us. There's your three stars of game seven. Who will our conference finals opponent be? It is gonna be the Detroit Red Wings. Let's sim the first three games and that's a good way to start. Will we sweep them in the conference finals? We will and it looks like we're gonna be taking on Vancouver in the Stanley Cup final. Whoa, spoke a little too soon there clearly. Spoke way too soon. First three games, how will they go against Colorado? All right. We have to win the Stanley Cup, right? You know what, actually, let's do, let's do something here. Let's sim this game and see if we sweep them and let's jump in. 
and watch the lads celebrate. First period. That's a good start. Second period. Ooh, we got a one goal lead heading into the third period. It is a close one. It's actually pretty crazy how much our bottom six has been contributing. At least I feel like maybe I'm blowing it out of proportion, but it seems like they've been doing a lot more than I would have expected them to. The net is empty for Colorado and they- Oh my days. They might do it. Don't you dare. Don't you absolutely dare. Big draw win from McDavid. The Colorado Avalanche managed to get control of it. Their net is still empty. Victor Hedman passes it into the middle. That was a little bit risky. Really? Are you serious? You could have just won the Stanley Cup by taking one more step. One single stride would have put that in the net. Nine seconds left. We get the puck in deep and that's gonna do it. Oh no, don't you dare. Don't say that I spoke too soon again. One second left. Vasilevsky puts it in the mitt. And there you have it, your Stanley Cup champions, the Saginaw Superstars. I can only imagine how cool it would be to actually win a Stanley Cup. Like, this would be easily one of the best feelings in the world. But then on the counter side of that, to lose in the Stanley Cup Finals, imagine losing in a Game 7 of Stanley Cup Finals. That would be an all-time low. Like, I feel bad for these guys, and they're just a, a bunch of AI. Well, on that note... Let's go check out the trophies. 28 points from Sydney. That guy popped off in the playoffs. But awards time. We already know that one. We already know that one. And we knew all of the team awards. Let's be real. Patty Kane won the Art Ross and Barkov gets the hearts. You know what? I'm just going to look for our logo. Did we win any individual trophies? Adam Fox gets the Con Smythe. Holy crap. How did he do? Now I want to go look at player stats to see how much points he put up. Fair enough. Fox as a defenseman put up 24 points. Actually, 24 assists. He didn't get a single goal in 20 games. So he is a well-deserving recipient. And he had a plus 25 on top of that. No one else is even really close to him in that department. Here is your playoff tree again guys if you have video ideas or anything you want to see me try to do on NHL 22 leave a comment down below and I hope you guys enjoyed this one it went a little bit better than the other one but we did still lose a fair amount of players by the end of it we only had our top six top four and starting goalie but I would still consider that a success especially considering we went down 3-0 to Carolina in the second round. So we were right there, so close to being eliminated, but we fought back. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.